you know, you and I connect really well because there's a huge level of similarities. This guy was completely the opposite. I was resisting and resisting. And somebody just kind of like turned to me and goes, do you not realize, Adam, that you're going to learn the most amount from the people that are not like you? So good morning and welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. Today I am joined again by um, Adam Harris, who is the founder of Frank and Fearless, but now also a professional EOS implementer, one of only three of us here in New Zealand. So super excited to have him back on the show. Welcome, Adam. Thank you very much. Really glad to be here. Yeah. So last time we spoke was quite a while ago. And although you had been using kind of EOS in your business, yep. you hadn't officially joined the fold. And now you're actually one of us, one of the, the, the community, one of the professional EOS implementers. Why? Why did you decide to take that path? Oh, dear. So EOS for me is, uh, has been a big part of my life. Uh, it's also been a big part of a number of my clients over the years. And I kind of got to the stage, <clears throat> it was probably further to a conversation. Actually, this podcast kind of reignited some some thought processes of like going, where and when do I do my best work? So kind of within EOS, as we know, we talk about doing what you love with people that you love. Mm-hmm. And I kind of reflected on that going, where do I do my best work that I get the most amount of reward for me? And actually, it's when I'm with a group of people and I'm facilitating and I'm holding the space, I'm allowing them to uh, enter the danger zone <clears throat> uh, to, to talk about the things that they really need to talk about that maybe they haven't been. Um, I had also ju- was in the process of reading EOS Life um, and it helped me understand that part of what we'd already done was moving towards EOS Life, but the work aspect wasn't something that I'd necessarily got quite, quite right. And then the final thing, to be honest, was I was on the conversation with uh, uh, a former colleague of mine who is also an EOS implementer in the US and that conversation was just... That was the conversation that allowed me to know what I was already thinking and gave me the, allowed me to give myself the permission to kind of go, actually, do you know what? Let's just do it. This is what, this is what you're born to do. So, yeah. Perfect. And, you know, this EOS Life thing. So for those who haven't read the book, the EOS Life is written by Gina Wickman, who also wrote Traction. And it's very much about how you live your ideal entrepreneurial life, not only in a business sense, but also in a personal sense. And you've got a really interesting journey, haven't you, in terms of your your life, your personal life? Yeah. So I first came across EOS f- about six years ago now. I used to be a, a, a Vistage or tech chair running mastermind groups for chief execs and MDs. And a client of mine or a member said, hey, I've just come across this book called Traction. Um, We want to implement it into our business. Uh, We need somebody. Can you do it? I'm like, yeah, yeah, cool. So went through it. Fell in love pretty much uh, within the first session. Um, Whilst uh, there's nothing massively revolutionarily new in it, um, the fact that it's all put together, um, there's simplicity uh, but also for me, the, the thing that I loved was the ability to be able to cascade through an organization. I think a lot of times in my experience of working with organizations is that um, the strategic conversations happen at the top table, but then getting everybody on board you know, uh, has always been a challenge. So um, I, I saw that was a big thing. Um, I actually um, helped uh, a further kind of 12 organizations go through EOS uh, unofficially. Um and uh, one of the, a couple of times I actually co-facilitated, and I've always been a massive fan of um, co-facilitating or co-chairing or speaking on stage with two people. I just I, I get energy from other people. Yeah. Um, and the lady, uh, shout out to Alice Jordan. Uh, Alice had said, oh, okay, I actually I really love this as well. I'm going to become an EOS implementer. I, I feel as if I need a company to kind of trial with. She said, do you know anybody? And I'm like pick me pick me (laughs) um so at the time uh, it was myself and my wife running the business uh was called fresh mindset which then became frank and fearless um and to cut a long story short our 10-year vision because we had this uh slogan which was the business is the business of the family so everything that we were doing was to um cement the family short term medium term and long term and our 10-year vision was to actually live a nomadic life um, so the concept around nomadic life is is that we would have uh, online businesses set up uh, and we weren't fixated on a particular uh, geographical location. We could travel around, uh, see the world, 
Um, and 10 years was because uh, our kids, hopefully, touch wood, would have left home by that point. <laughs> um, not, but yeah, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one of the things that they say within uh, EOS is be careful what you wish for. Uh, mm-hmm. And then within probably about uh, 12 months, we'd set ourselves the target of going, right, okay, we felt as if we needed a move for the family. We were based in uh, Nottingham, the UK, Robin Hood country. Uh, we were looking at moving to the south of England uh, to change the kids' school. And then, fortuitously, there was an opportunity for us to kind of move over here to New Zealand. And that's where I am now. And uh, mm, and in which it. part of New Zealand? I am in a uh, place called New Plymouth. Some people yep. may have heard of Mount Taranaki, formerly Mount Egmont. Mount Egmont, um, yeah. Bit out of the way, uh, but actually yeah. quality of life here is just, uh, yeah, I love it. I love it. I think last time we kind of caught up, you were just coming back from a tennis tennis lesson or something, weren't you? <laughs> In the middle of the day, which is well, fantastic. <laughs> yeah, and, and and actually, you know, um, um, uh, and interestingly, just before I got on this uh, call, I had my level ten meeting with my wife, and we were we were just re um, reevaluating the wants and needs. Um, and actually, I think we're really quite hard on ourselves, but just kind of looking consistently, and going, okay, look, what do we want to do more of? What do we want to kind of do um, less of? Um, you know, and I think uh, it's only been highlighted even further since you know EOS life and, and listening to it in time for other pursuits. You know, what are the things that you always say that oh, if only we had time to do this, this, and this. You know, <laughs> one of my one of my rocks for this quarter has been to um, not do any delivery work on a Friday to give me the chance to uh, a to spend more time with my wife, uh, b um, the assembly at school is always on a Friday at kind of like two o'clock so you know trying to make sure that I'm there for the kids yeah. uh, but then also for myself as well kind of going okay you know I need to go on a long walk I need to kind of detach myself um Fridays is uh is for me trying to you know is to not do that so yeah really important and it's interesting is it because that whole time to pursue other passions thing is um People say, oh, it's easy for us because we are implementers, we're consultants, therefore we can kind of plan our life around that. But it's actually true of any business. I mean, you and I have both run some pretty big businesses. And if if you don't make the time for it, it will never happen. But you can make the time for it provided you've got the the right team around you, doing the right things, being held accountable, discipline, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think think a large part of it actually comes into the narrative that we we tell ourselves. Mm. Um. So the word B-U-S-Y I banned from my vocabulary about <laughs> four years ago because at the end of the day, it's all a choice. Yeah. You know, um, as implementers, in, th- in theory, we're running our own businesses. Yep. Um, there's always stuff to do. You know, w- whatever organization you're in, whether, you're, whether uh, you own it or whether you're employed, is that, you know, there's always stuff to do. And we can we can convince ourselves of well I'm just too full on and I've just got too much to do and my to do list is everything like that. But actually, getting to the stage of the discipline, you know, and the delegate and elevate tools and you know right people right seats accountability chart. Actually, when we start taking that step back, uh, we can actually create the time and actually when we make it a priority, we realise that we can be uh, personally more effective by when we're doing something we really love. We'll actually mm-hmm. focus better in other areas because we don't want to dilute the chance and the opportunity to do what we feel is important for us. Um, yeah. I, I've I've still got a long way to go in actually getting to the stage of uh, you know of some new hobbies and some new uh, bits and pieces, but uh, I know that I'm far better now than I have been previously. Yeah. Um, I'm a bit the same myself. I mean, I don't think I'll ever be particularly great at it, but I must admit that um, I have def- I definitely make time on the weekends now to actually go off and do things. I do make time throughout the week to do the things that are important to me, like the, the gym and the walking and those bits that keep you nice and healthy. So some people, some of our listeners may or may not have actually seen us kind of up on stage, if you like, or online um, uh, working together. And we're both a wee bit similar, right? We're both full of energy. We both love to kind of share the knowledge that we have. I think we're both trained actors as well, aren't we? You're a trained actor? Uh, I am indeed a thespian, yes. Yes, me too. Okay, cool. So I guess people will kind of wonder, but what does that translate to in the session room? Because it sounds like we love to talk. Um, but actually, you know, coaching, facilitating is not really about talking, is it? No, um, you know, I've been a professional coach for 15 years, uh, did a lot of my work through uh, Vistage or tech 
known here mm-hmm. in Australia, New Zealand. Um, so I, I've had a, a huge amount of uh, of training and development, and I think that coupled with my my personality and my my own core values, um, I've kind of learned to navigate as a you know as a facilitator within the room. And maybe this is why the reason why I love it so much is that a couple of things for me are really important. So I kind of work on the on the premise that often the less I say, the more effective the meeting has been, because. I'm holding the, you know, I, I'm there and employed and working with the organisation to hold the space, to give the individuals and the collective the permission to say the things that they probably wouldn't say if they were on their own. So I think for one thing is is that actually it's about holding the space. The second thing is is that actually there's often some really subtle things that can be done. Um, I think for me, I've just found that it's it's just inherent within me. I'm probably because I'm a high empath, but Sometimes it's just a look. Sometimes it's just kind of, you know, stood behind somebody and that just physical physical presence mm-hmm. just allows them to uh, go somewhere that maybe they wouldn't have gone before. Sometimes it's a slight touch on the shoulder, which is almost the invitation to kind of say something. Yeah. Um, I, I, I learned a phrase, you know, many years ago, which is just hold strong for me for, you know, and uh, the test of time. Let the silence do the heavy lifting. So sometimes it's uh, whether it be me or there be somebody else is that to almost you know pull the pin out of the grenade it gets thrown into the middle of the room and then knowing that I'm not going to be the person that's going to speak next you know mm-hmm. there's kind of almost this uh, this energy sometimes it's positive sometimes it's the there's there's tension and just knowing that I'm not going to be the one that's going to speak. So somebody else will then find the need uh, or the courage uh, to st- to then speak and have the conversation. And actually, what that does is it it allows us to kind of peel away the onion skin um, and go to some places that we definitely need to go to um, that maybe we've been uh, preventing. And I think for me, that's a real key part of the role of the facilitator is how do we ensure that we're having deeper, more meaningful conversations. And, and the other thing is, is that uh, I kind of have this thing in my mind. Um, if I feel uncomfortable, then we're playing in exactly the right space, <laughs> right? Because if if I feel uncomfortable, which doesn't happen very often, but I'm, I'm always pushing towards that, that space um, through the questions that I ask and the challenges, etc. Then we're working on the serious, you know, the serious work, you know, uh, you talk about the elephant in the room, and it's that there's there's a huge similarity. Is that we need to get to the stage of having the conversation and talking about the things that are the most important with the most important people now, because if we don't talk about it now, it's only going to be something that we're going to come back to in at the next quarter or the next annual. Um, the sooner we can start having those conversations, uh, the more effective we can be and be able to move forward. And often if they're left for that period of time, they get bigger, right? They create oh. more issues, so everything around them gets even more murky. So, Yeah, and I, and I think often, you know, um, this is the, you know, this is the true benefit of, uh, of having an, an external implementer because their fundamental role is to ensure that you achieve what it is that you want to achieve. You know, mm. we, don't, we don't take any prisoners. Um, we, don't necessarily, we don't have the necessarily the same um, emotional involvement. So that challenge or that ability at times to be able to kind of go, hey, look, I'm going to call bullshit now because, you know, that rock or that review that you've just done there, I think you're just being a little bit soft. What's the issue, you know, what's the issue that's sitting behind the issue? And actually, if we can if we can really make sure that we're, we accelerate those conversations, then... You know, we, we just end up, the ability to be able to get to where we need to get to is that we get there faster. Um, is there going to be some collateral damage along the way? Yes, but that's part of the process. And, you know, I think I think often I've observed with self-implementers is that they almost try and protect too much, um, which doesn't actually, it might it doesn't serve them in the long run. It just, no. like you say, it delays the inevitable. Yeah, absolutely. So if you had to describe your um, EOS superpower, if you like, what would you say it is? 
uh i well i picked this up from what other people say about me so if you kind of yep. troll uh my linkedin recommendations or you kind of watch uh, the video testimonials uh, people say about me is is that i just have this innate ability to be able to ask the right questions at the right time yeah. um and, and what that means is is that so i'm i'm intently listening um for what is being said often what's not being said and actually uh it, it's it's picking up on people's body languages as well and i can do that personally i can do that as well online as i can do face to face makes no difference to me I'm kind of in. I'm kind of tuning myself to where and what's going on. Um, so I, I, I'm when I've got that ability is that it's then a case of articulating the right conversation. Uh, we, sorry, the right question, which kind of does you know the the typical response that I typically tend to get is something along the lines of, "Oh, that's a really hard question," um, or "Ah, oh, Adam, why the hell are you asking me that?" Uh, or, you know, just so I, I'm kind of just knocking them off their perch a little bit, but I'm doing it with the intent of actually getting them to move themselves, um, move themselves forward. Uh, so that's kind of my my superpower is to be able to ask the killer question to the right person at the right time. And I can attest to that because I know that you have actually done a little bit of coaching sort of um, not uh, formally but informally with me around some of the things that I have. So I, I, I definitely second that. It's a, it's a very unique skill. And, and I do because we mostly engage online. So it is it is fascinating. You really have got that online space really sorted. I mean, I, I do it. I don't know that I feel necessarily comfortable with it, but I do do it. You just seem to come. It comes naturally to you and you don't miss out on anything regardless of that online environment. Um, yeah, there's only two people that I do kind of miss out on, and that's my kids because I'm t I'm, I'm too emotionally involved. And I, I, I think yeah. um, I had conversations with coaches previously, and you know they were coming out of coaching sessions and going, oh, you know, I can't believe such and such. It's like I, I have this real great ability to be able to detach myself and kind of going, I'm here to serve within the time that we're together, mm -hmm. but I can't take on the energy of what's going on for you because if i do then actually i'm not going i'm not being able to kind of serve so look and look don't get me wrong I, I come out of um you know uh focus days and session days and i'm i'm tired and i'm tired because i'm i'm mentally uh, working really really hard um i do typically tend to move around a lot as well because i need to keep my energy kind of moving um but I, I kind of come out of it, and I've, I've got so much of a reward, reward because I've, I know that the, the individual or the organisation that I'm working with have moved forward from where they were. Uh, sometimes it's very, very subtle, and it's kind of like dropping, uh, dropping a stone into a river, and then you know, kind of the ripples will then start happening, and then a couple of days, a couple of weeks, a couple of months later, it's like, hey, do you remember that conversation that we had? and you know something big then changes um or it's a case that actually we can make real fundamental shifts in a very short period of time and uh you know we come out of the session and people go my god i can't believe how much we've covered today it's like well look i just held the space i just did what i do um and that's why for me it's great to be part a uh, part of a community because we're you and i are doing the same thing but slightly differently and actually, I love the nuances of learning from other people, kind of going, you know, I, I remember in my early um, years um, of being a Vistage chair, um, sitting in a room and doing some training because, you know, personal development and ongoing training is a big part for me. And there was this guy who I just really didn't connect with, um, just wasn't, you know, you and I connect really well because there's a huge level of similarities. This guy was completely the opposite. And I was resisting and resisting. And somebody just kind of like turned to me and goes, do you not realize, Adam, that you're going to learn the most amount from the people that are not like you? Mm. And that's just that's just really stuck with me. In fact, um, uh, my one of my best friends within, uh, within Vistage, a guy called Chris Everard, um, we're so different, but yeah. we, we chaired a group together and the learning that I got through that was for, for just for me was absolutely mm. phenomenal because I go I would never ever not even have done that I would never even have thought about just doing what you just done 
Wow. Okay. Help me understand. Let's di- you know, digest. Help me understand why you've done that. Well, this is what I was thinking. Just completely different. So, yeah, I love it. Uh, and I think that's what we get from our EOS community, right? And I, oh. I certainly do. There's so many different personalities in there, you know, and I can think of some of my, my favourites who are actually completely the opposite of me. Yep. Um, and you do, you just kind of sit there and go, wow, I had never even considered that. That is brilliant, yeah. Mm-hmm. I like to think that my husband and, and I have a similar kind of um, relationship to where we have uh, very, very different strengths and weaknesses and we're like a jigsaw puzzle, like the VI jigsaw puzzle that you get oh. in the EOS. <laughs> and, and that's the thing is it just kind of reflects on uh, helping us understand. I... I I also picked up through some other work I did uh, years ago that actually it's really important to observe and respect other people's differences. Mm. And, you know, when we go into judgment mode, um, we're judging actually against our own position. Yep. And actually, that who's to say that we're right? Mm. You know, because every, you, you come at things from, a you know, your experiences, uh, the nuances of how you've been brought up, uh, your education, you've got your reasons as to why you think the way that you do. So why should yeah. I expect that you should move to where I am? I need to take a step back and go, okay, cool. Uh, Deborah's just responded that way. Okay, I might not have responded that way, but how and why has she done it that way? That that for me is where if that inquisitive nature of being of, of looking at the difference instead of trying to have a judgment and have a comparison... Uh, we can really get into some really interesting debates and conversations and understanding. So now this fascinates me because I think this is something I've had to learn to do over time. When I was young, I was very, you know, uh, very much... Yeah, I judge people immediately, like almost to the point of um, having a perception of somebody just from their, their initial view and, and what I saw of them. I've learned very na- very much now that it is all about, you know, taking that sort of um, back seat and actually looking and thinking about putting yourself in their shoes and, and thinking about where that judgment comes from, holding the mirror up to yourself, etc., etc. Um, do you think it's something that was has always come naturally to you or is it something you've had to hone in on as well? Um, a little bit of both, I think. I was always a very inquisitive child. In fact, you've me heard too. me. You've you've heard me say that even before I could walk, uh, the first things that were coming out of my mouth was why, 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 why. Uh, so I think there's always been there's a natural innate thing within me of just being inquisitive. I think as the years have gone on, there's just become more of an appreciation and an understanding of people. Um, and you know, I I think when you do the work that we do, um, and you have to you know, you're kind of holding that space and being objective. Um, I, I still, I, I feel blessed, but also I feel that sometimes there's a little bit of a curse that sits behind it because, you know, um, I kind of liken it to kind of, you know, the the peripheral vision has just kind of been widened. Yep. So I don't necessarily uh, conform or fit in with how other people think and feel. So that's that often puts me as uh, as you know, and I struggled definitely struggled in at school, and definitely into kind of my my teens and then into my twenties. Of kind of going, I thought I was the one that was like different, like massively, and actually there became this massive understanding and realization is actually the way that I think is different, but actually there's nothing wrong with that, um, and I can celebrate the fact that my diverse thinking. Um, and the way that my brain works is just it is just different um and and you know to get to the stage of being um doing the work that allows me to just be authentically me you know doing my eos life uh that's great because i know that so many people don't get to that stage is that that they they're just they're just doing a job and that's yep. perfectly fine um, but I always knew that I needed to do something that that was going to spark me, um, and you know the journey that it's taken me to get get to this point uh, has been long, has been very very hard, uh, but actually I, I thrive in in the challenge and the growth. Fantastic. Hey, look, I know that you're currently building your EOS practice because you've only just recently kind of graduated from EOS school or whatever they call it, boot camp, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Um, so tell me, what it, who is your ideal client? Because I know that we always talk about the generic, you know, it's privately owned, 10 to 250 people. But what's yep. your real sweet spot? What do you love about the clients that you work with and who would, who, what would you like more of? Uh, so from a practical perspective, um, uh two or three sessions online so i'm really i'm really really good with um 
organizations that have purposely gone to a distributed uh, model mm-hmm. um, or ones that are now choosing to, to be that. So I was kind of actively doing online coaching and work for the last kind of uh, 10 years. So it's a space that I'm very, very comfortable with. I, I do, however, prefer to work with organizations that have at least one meeting, probably preferably the annual um, in person. Yep. Um, if that means that I have to travel, that's great because that's part of my US life. So uh, <laughs> yep. that's a big tick in the box yep. for me. <laughs> um, but because because uh, rapport and relationship are really, really, uh, really, really key for me. Um, mm-hmm. I also love working with um, quite dynamic uh, organizations where there's a lot of change that's happening quite fast quite quickly so whether that be uh, the visionary is kind of on a completely you know uh, on the spectrum um, <laughs> you know I've been working with I've been working with chief execs and MDs for 15 years so um, there's there's very rarely somebody that I come across who I've not uh, coached and supported uh, previously um, mm-hmm. so I'm really comfortable um, in that in that space, I love for me. I love the dynamic between the visionary and the integrator. Um, and actually, whilst I do have background in um, technology uh, and in kind of marketing, um, also TV and film industry, um, the it, it's more about the people. Actually, yeah. you know, I, I I love working with people that uh, that want to become aligned if they're not already. Uh, mm-hmm. And actually, they kind of want to, you know, they all want to move forward in the right di- direction. And also that they're two things: one, they're up for they're up for the challenge, and they're they're up for the hard work. But also, they want to have a bit of fun along the way. You know, having fun is really really important important for me. Um, and also, there's got to be some last thing because this is really important for me. There's got to be some good nosh. So I, <laughs> I, uh, I'm a big, I'm a big foodie. So you know, yeah. um, I, I really, it's really got to make sure that we're uh, there's some good food that's available for me. Excellent, I love it. <laughs> I mean, like, when I, whenever I talk to you, I always realise that there's lots, lots of similarities, but there's also a few differences as well. And I think that that um, it's great to kind of hear what what makes you your heart sing. Hey, we always ask for three top tips or pointers at the end of the the podcast to share with the listeners something they can go away. Could be a book, could be an online tool, could be just a piece of advice that you've learned through your experiences. What would you like to share with the listeners today? Okay, uh, coming in at number three. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, I think the thing for me is is uh, a mentor having having a mentor. So uh, you know, I, I think if you're working with an implementer, uh, or if you're listening to this, and whether you're doing EOS or you're considering doing EOS, your your implementer is going to um, hold your feet to the fire, take you on the journey of helping you uh, implement uh, the tools and the process. You may or may not decide to have a coach at the same point as well. I think um, mm. coaching has been massively uh, uh, important for me um, through my life, but also obviously with the work that uh, that I've done. Um, but I actually think it's really important to have one or two mentors from your vertical sector who you can build a rapport and a relationship with, and um, ensure that you're probably meeting them once a quarter, just to be able to kind of go, "Hey, look, this is where we're at." Just give me the uh, the your take on things. You know, when you did this before, what did you do? So I think it becomes quite a good. Um, I suppose it's a variation of the clarity break. Uh, you know, one of the tools that we use, but actually, it's about getting a different perspective. I often find that um, leaders within organisations are they're so tunnel vision because they're dealing with everything they've got. Uh, finding a way of getting, um, you know, turning the kaleidoscope and having the ability to be able to see a different viewpoint is really key. My recommendation would be is that the visionary and the integrator find their own independent um, mentors, but that's not to say the rest of the leadership team can't uh, can't as well. And you're talking about being in the same vertical sector. You're talking about somebody who's been there, done that, or is is doing that, that has some understanding. Because yeah. that's what a mentor really is, isn't it? It's not it, like a coach. Yeah, and, and yeah, and that that's exactly the way that I would describe the difference between a coach and a mentor is mm-hmm. a mentor has been there, seen it, got the t shirt. They kind of kind of almost inadvertently put the arm around the shoulder and go, Hey Deborah, back in my day, this is what we did. Now <laughs> Like you don't have to take the information, yep. but actually just getting a different perspective, you'll walk away from that conversation 
um, with a different viewpoint, which will actually start getting you getting you thinking. So. Mm. What what about peer groups? This is me just interrupting, but yep. you know, because mentors is one thing, but peer groups can also be another oh. way of getting that vertical sector stuff happening. So, or, or uh, even just people who are in the same position as you in different sectors. A- absolutely. So, you know, um, I've been running mastermind groups for for fifteen years. I think they are absolutely uh, game changers. I think I can't mm-hmm. remember the quote, and I hope that you might be able to. They say that you know, if you're if you're an entrepreneur and you're running a business. Uh, pick your operating system and um, have a coach stroke mastermind group um, and the reason for that is is that yet yeah, having an operating system will help you run the business mm-hmm. but having a coach stroke a mastermind group will allow you to be uh, to challenge your assumptions to push your boundaries and your own expectations and give you give you first and foremost a level of sanity to know, hey, I'm not the only one that's going through this these issues, challenges, and opportunities. Yep. Um, to have a sounding board where you can leave your ego at the door, mm-hmm. um, which is really important. And uh, and then the last thing is is that actually you're coming out of it um, revitalized and re-energized um, because. Whether you whether it's you that's processed something or you've heard something else is that you you're, you're stimulating the ideas. Sometimes it's a case that you're uh, you're laying the seeds that are actually going to grow two three years down the line, um, and and it probably typified this for me during kind of uh, in the in the first couple of weeks when COVID happened, because those people that are used to being in an environment where they're talking around change, challenge, and growth. Um, their ability to be able to adapt, and uh, I will use the word pivot, um, <laughs> they were able to do it qu- quite fast and quite quick and not put the emotional attachment to it. Yeah. Other organizations were like like deers in headlights because it's like, oh my God, what's happening? No, I don't know what to do. Um, so when you're in that, when you're when you're aware and you're, uh, you're used to the process of going, here's the information, how do we deal with it? How do we process it? How do we IDS it? Or how do we issue process it to get to the stage going, right, what's the real issue here? That then gives us the ability to be able to process and get to the stage of being able to make a decision. And also knowing, hey, look, best level thinking. You know, at this moment in time, based upon the information, we've processed it and this is the this is what we're gonna do. You know, within hours, you know, uh, alert changes and everything like that. Okay, guys, look, come back in. Need to have another conversation. Now yeah. we've got a new piece of information. How do we deal with it accordingly? Um, so to, to be not be able to panic. So I, I would always recommend, and if there's anybody listening to this who is thinking about uh, wanting to join a mastermind group and wants to know more information, uh, I am happy to share uh, my thoughts and opinions of what to look for when looking for either a coach and or uh, a mastermind group. That's fabulous. Cool. Now, as is, as is my podcast, I'm allowed to now do an unashamedly sort of, you know, a plug for our own services because you and I are about to run our, our mastermind group together online, which is all for um, EOS implementers, self-implementers who want a little bit of extra help in that. So if you'd like to find anything more about that, you can contact either Adam or myself. Um, but yeah, we sort of see the power of, we, we would love you to work with us as implementers one-on-one. Um, but at the same time, we realize if you want to self-implement, you might just need that little bit of extra help. And so we're about to set up that um, online mastermind group anyway that was my little shameless plug (laughs) number two that was number three Um, what's number two just before i get on um there's a couple of books by a a good friend of mine in the u.s called leo bottery uh and he wrote a couple of books one was called the power of peers uh the importance around mastermind groups and then the second one was called peer innovation how what happens within a peer group we can take and understand how we can be creative and innovative within our organizations so again just a little um tip uh number number two um i think the there's there's a large aspect for me around um journaling and reflecting Mm. so um uh when i was up last with you deborah i i picked up uh, the eos uh, life journal and planner um, yep. which um, I'm really looking forward to starting uh, on Wednesday after my quarterly meeting with my team. Um, yeah. I actually wrote a book uh, six years ago called the Check-In Strategy Journal. Um, I've used other journals along the time. And for me, what I what I find and what I love about them is it's the ability to be able to hit the pause button, yep. to take a step back and just go, okay, so 
based on what I was was gonna do, have I done it, have I achieved it? Uh, what's working, what's not working? Okay, cool, now as I plan moving forward, um, how and what do I need to do? So, you know, it, from an EOS terms perspective, we're doing this on a quarterly basis with the meeting pulse, which is one of the reasons why, um, you know, EOS works and those people that are listening to it know because you've got the, the 90 day world and you're then moving into the level 10 world. I think that for me, taking a step further is there's, there's something then about the personal ownership and accountability of being able to um, to check in with yourself and kind of going, okay, what do I need to do? How am I doing it? What works? What doesn't work for me? Um, the current journal that I've been using, the question prompts get me to do things that are important that I probably wouldn't do if I wasn't getting the prompt. So who's the one person I need to uh, to thank uh, or show a sign of appreciation? Okay. Um, now I'm not an ungrati, you know, somebody that doesn't give Ungrateful. gratitude. Yeah. Yeah. But actually what it does do is it allows me to just stop and pause and go, actually, who in my life at this moment in time uh, do I need to influence? You know, do I need to say thank you, thank you to? Because actually those small acts are really, really important for them, but actually also for, uh, for me. So yeah. I think the more we can stay on the path of with the trajectory that we want to go, I think um, that really, really works. Um, Perfect. Yep, I agree. Cool. cool. So number one. Uh, <laughs> Drum roll. <laughs> coming, <Number> one. <laughs> coming in at number one. Um, never stop growing. Mm. So, you know, I think, again, if we look at it from an EOS perspective, when you're working with an implementer, the tools, the processes, the model allows for that consistent level of evergreen learning. Um, you're learning, but you're then looking to kind of get to the mastery stage. I think from a uh, from a and it then kind of again it again moves on to the personal side side which is what am I doing individually where I'm growing? So what am I doing that is getting me out of my comfort zone, out of my own levels of assumptions, out of my own levels of judgment to challenge my thought processes, my physical energy, uh, my mental capacity. Um, so you know. The aspect of being comfortable with being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So, uh, again, you know, putting yourself in situations going, okay, um, because actually that that's for me is where the magic happens. The magic co happens when uh, we're on the edge of our comfort zone. You know, mm -hmm. we all know when we look at a situation that we haven't been in before, we're looking at it from a level of um, intrepidation because we don't know what the outcome is going to be, Right. Uh, once we've done it, whatever it is, it's never as bad as we think it's, that, that it was going <laughs> to no. be, right? Yeah. So if we're able to put ourselves in that situation on a consistent basis, then actually what we're doing is is that we're pushing our own boundaries. Uh, we're challenging, like I say, uh, our mental, our physical, our spiritual, our emotional um, uh, perspectives and assumptions. Uh, and that's actually, that's, that is that is for where the growth comes from. Um, so... You know, people listening to this, what what's one thing that you've always thought about doing that for whatever reason you've not done? Maybe now's the time. Maybe now's the time to book that um, jumping out of a plane. Yeah. Maybe now's the time to, um, you know, learn to play an instrument or a language. It doesn't matter what it is, but actually what you end up doing is by working on something new, you're creating new neurons within your mind. Okay, which does one or two things. First and foremost, actually gives you longevity because your brain is having to work, right? The second thing is, is that actually, uh, depending on the research that you look at, um, actually it creates new habits. They reckon that 66 days is, is the, you know, from the research I've done, 66, 66 days, sexy, sex, 66 days. <laughs> um, if you do something consistently over that period of time, then it now becomes a, a regular habit, habit. okay? Yeah. Um, so, you know, what are the aspects that you feel that you need and want to change within your life? Uh, just definitely worthwhile kind of looking at. 
Perfect. Hey, look, Adam, you, you and I could definitely talk for hours because we just love sharing. I think I've finally met somebody who's just as passionate about helping other people as I am, as all of the EOS implementers are in our, in our community. So um, really appreciate your time. What if somebody wants to get hold of you? Because you've already offered to help share about mastermind groups. I know that you are, uh, you're, help, you're willing to help anybody on their EOS journey, whether they're self-implementing, whether they're doing it on their own, whether they're, sorry, yeah, that's the same thing, self-implementing or working with an implementer that, you know, you're happy to help. So yeah. how do people get in contact with you? Um, so, so um, just to caveat that sits behind, behind that is that what um, Clifton Strengths Finder, um, uh, which is one of the kind of I don't know the tests that you could take to understand who you are and what you're about um, within the US. We use uh, Colby. I, I'm a big fan of all of them because I think what it does is it helps us understand a little bit more about a who we are, but also about b who the people are that we're working with in our teams. Yeah. So if that sparks a thought or a conversation, it can only be a benefit. Um, Within uh, Clifton Strengths Finder, um, they talk about strengths. One of my, I think it's my second strength is about connecting. Um, I just had, and, and you and I are very, very similar on this, Deborah. I hear somebody say something and I'm able to connect people together or ideas together even before they've even thought about it. So <laughs> yeah. I spend, you know, probably on a daily basis, I'm just dropping people an email going, hey, Deborah, can I introduce you to such such? I think that you two really need to have a conversation on X. So um, I I just and I take great joy in in, in doing that. Um, so yep. yeah, if people feel that they want to get in touch with me, uh, they can contact you through me or uh, frankandfearless.com dot com or check me out on LinkedIn. One of the things I always say is um, uh, recommendations from other people is is, is something that's really important to me. Um, mm -hmm. But I always I always say if you want to know more about who I am, how I work, what my style is, etc. Just read or watch what other people say about me because actually you're going to get more from them uh, than you are from, from me. Um, I just find that other people can uh, communicate better than I can, I think. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cool. So they can find you on LinkedIn. They can find yep. all those beautiful testimonies and things for people who have worked with you. And um, yeah, that you're more than happy to help and connect it wherever you can. Absolutely. Adam, appreciate your openness, appreciate your willingness to help. Um, always love talking to you. Can't wait to see you again in our next kind of um, workshop. And yeah, thanks for your time. Thank you.